everybody, this is Shelby from Chicago Music Exchange, and today I'm excited to have five different iterations of the Fender Stratocaster, uh, starting with the first year, moving all the way up to the CBS era of the Fender Strat. We have a 1954, a 1957, a 1960, a 1964, and a 1965. So one of the great things about having all these guitars here is that we've pulled them all apart and looked at really the differences between the 54 all the way up to the 65. Uh, you can see in the 54 to the 57, the shielding underneath there uh, for the electronics is very small. And as you get later in the years, it becomes a larger part of the entire pick garden. The warm route in the 54 is really crude and, and just seems, you know, like they, they are just trying to figure out how to do this. And as the years progress, you see that it gets better and more efficient. You can see the difference between the electronics um, on the back of these pick guards moving from the 54 to the 65. And these major changes um, as the company has been growing and, and changing and testing things out. And you can look at all of these necks in a row and see that you know, it's moved from a pencil mark to a stamp. You've moved from maple necks to a rosewood slab to a veneer. See all these changes throughout the history of, of these guitars. First and foremost, I have a 1954 sitting on my lap, which is the first year of the Fender Strat. This one's a hardtail, which was an option at that time, but they were also doing with the tremolo um, system. This guitar has a, a bake-like material pickguard and rounded pickup covers here. The knobs are a little bit smaller than you're going to see in the later years. It's got an ash body and a really nice two-tone sunburst, which has a little bit of brown um, in it. It's really nice and rich looking. Very round profiled maple neck, larger than pretty much you're going to see in any other year of these strats. As you can see, it has the Fender Spaghetti logo here. It does not say synchronized tremolo underneath there because it's a hard tail. Uh, it's got a flat, round string tree, and as you can see really close up here, very rounded edges on some of these contours on the headstock, which is very exclusive to this year in the Strat. So moving on to the 57, we have a plastic guard, um, larger knobs, and, and more squared off pickup covers. It's got the synchronized tremolo system that we're used to seeing, and we move to an alder body instead of ash. But still two-tone sunburst, really nice, dark, uh, rich browns and, and some blacks in here. Maple board, moved to a V-neck profile, which you pretty much only see on the 57 uh, in this particular era of this guitar. And we have the, the butterfly string tree. So, uh, spaghetti fender logo, Cluson style tuners, with no patent pending numbers up here. Uh, but you can see the edges of this headstock have really sharpened up from the 54. And now on to the 1960 Fender Strat. We have a different type of guard. We have a mint three-ply guard here. Same kind of knob constructions, uh, black bobbin pickups, synchronized trim, uh, older body, but we moved to a three-tone sunburst. The fretboard has changed to a rosewood slab board. Uh, later it's gonna move to a veneer board. And as we get up to the headstock, again, you still see the Fender spaghetti style logo, the butterfly string, string tree and uh, Cluson style tuners. The neck profile is a lot thinner than the 57. Moving into the 60s, it really rounds out to a medium, like to small C shape. Let's check it out and see how it sounds.
Moving on to the 1964 Strat, we have this gorgeous candy apple red. Unfortunately, we don't have a sunburst one, but if we did, it would be a three-tone sunburst as well. Still it's mint guard, uh, but we're moving into the gray bobbin pickup construction here. Uh, same knobs, these do sound a little bit different. So on the fretboard here, it's gonna be a rosewood fretboard with a veneer and pearloid dots. And as we move up to the headstock, you can see that the logo has completely changed at this point. A lot of people think that this large logo is a part of the CBS era of Fender, but actually they made the change before the, the purchase. So you have the large block Fender logos with some patent numbers underneath here and the, blood, uh, <clears throat> and the butterfly string tree still. The neck profile is a little bit rounder than the 60. It's kind of filled out a little bit. Um, and this guitar has tons of great wear across the front and the back. As some of you might know, the Fender L-Plate series, but basically when they moved into the thousands of adding the serial number to the back plates, they accidentally stamped them L. Uh, so you have a very specific era of guitars that say L at the beginning of the serial number instead of a one. So lastly, we have a 1965, which has a white three-ply guard, same pickup constructions, same volume tone knobs, uh, synchronized trim system, but you can see that they have this nice dyed yellow three-tone sunburst. It's very red, completely changes the way this guitar looks. Again, we have a veneer board uh, with perloid dots, and as you move up to the Headstock, you can see that it still has a very large Fender logo with the patent pending numbers, Cluson style tuners. The headstock is a little bit different than the uh, 64. This is really like the last iteration of the Fender Strat before CBS took over Fender. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, these are five different iterations of the Fender Strat. I'm playing through a 67 Fender Super Reverb. Thanks for watching.